Okay, hello everybody. Welcome back to another live session, which we are, where we are going to understand what TCS Equity Verbal Ability comprises, what uh, what are the type of questions, the difficulty level, and we are going to practice along with me for the TCS Equity Verbal Ability section. All right. So um, let's begin with the session here. We're just going to wait for a couple of minutes, just a couple of minutes, one or two minutes so that there are more people joining in. We have the news there are more people joining in. Let's just quickly wait for a couple of minutes until then you can call on your friends, your um, batchmates, your classmates and get together on this particular session because it's going to be an interesting interactive session. I would need your interaction with me because we are preparing for TCS NQT. Now I know that there is a lot of anticipation regarding uh, when is TCS announcing the NQT selection, the NQT process, right? And we have that uh, like apprehension as well. But before that, let's just not waste our time. Let's get ourselves prepared for the section. Let's get ourselves geared up. If TCS NQT is announced tomorrow, what are you going to do? You're not going to have a lot of time in your hand to prepare for the section, right? So why don't we prepare ourselves for TCS NQT verbal ability along with coding, aptitude, logical reasoning, and so on and so forth. So we are going to have a marathon for the TCS NQT aptitude and coding section. We had the aptitude part yesterday. We're going to have verbal ability today, and we are all set to have a coding and the logical reasoning session tomorrow. So don't forget uh, to join us on this marathon and get yourself prepared for the TCS NQT verbal ability section and the entire selection process. All right. So if you don't want to miss any of the hiring updates and if you want to be on the edge when TCS NQT is announced and you don't want to miss even a single minute, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and you're following us on all of our social media handles, including Instagram, WhatsApp, Discord, LinkedIn, and Telegram. At least you should be following us on our Instagram, WhatsApp, and Discord because we are going to post as soon as TCS announces the NQT process, we are going to post a very minute and we don't want you to miss on that update. On uh, YouTube also, we are going to live the moment TCS announces the NQT registration process. So we'll be coming live for that as well. So if you don't want to miss any of the deeds and the details for the TCS NQT recruitment process for the year 2024, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the notification bell, otherwise you are going to miss out the notification that TCS is hiring now. All right, that's that. Let's begin with the hiring session over here, with the preparation session over here. And the thing that you need for this live session is number one, a notepad and a pen, because I would want you to practice along with me. All right, I don't want you to just sit there like a statue, like a boring student and just read and just listen to what I'm saying. I would want you to answer along with me. You, you will also be scoring yourself. All right. So we are going to have nine to 10 questions. Score yourself at least one point for each question. If you're doing it right, kudos, you're on the right path. 
if you're not doing it right, kudos, you're again on the right path because you are practicing along with me and practice makes a man perfect, right? So again, keep a notepad and a pen along with you, keep a timer along with you because that is going to help you out to analyze how quickly or how slowly you are answering the questions, which is going to help you to improve your lightning speed answering as well. All right, next we need your brains. Definitely, if you don't have your brains, you are not going to pass the NQT process at all. And lastly, we need interaction. So if I'm going to ask you questions, give me the answers and that way we are going to learn and grow together. All right, so those were the things that we need. If you're not answering, I will not be following up the questions. So make sure that you're answering all the questions and you are on the same page along with me. Leaving that, let's start off with the first question right over here on your screen. So what the question states that, choose the most appropriate option to complete the following sentences. A protein breakfast dash prepare, stop your morning toast with scrambled eggs, a slice of smoked salmon, or some lean ham, and when dash time, enjoy an omelet, right? So that's a quick recipe for an omelet. So if you want to try an omelet tomorrow, that's the recipe question number one there for you. So you can quickly come back to this live session, click on the first question and prepare your omelet right with some ham and some salmon but before that let's answer this particular question over here so let's see what the answer can be okay so uh, let's just stop for a moment i'm giving you the um, time to answer the question just 10 seconds not more than that and then we are going to start off with the solutions here okay set yourself a timer guys set yourself a timer drop the answers in the comment section below i'll be checking them out and then we are going to move forward with the answer Okay, so let's see. A protein breakfast dash prepared. Top your morning toast with scrambled eggs, a slice of smoked salmon, or some lean ham. And when dash time, enjoy an omelet. The first thing that we need to understand is that there are two things mentioned before and after the blank. The first thing is prepared. Now, this is a verb, right? And the second blank states time, which is a noun, right? So we need an action verb over here which is going to be an infinitive verb or which can be, a, let's say, a preposition, all right? So breakfast dash prepared, right? So two, 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 we have a protein breakfast, needn't take long to prepare, needn't taking any longer to prepare, need not taking any longer to prepare or need not take no longer to prepare. Now here, since we're giving out a solution, we're stating a statement, all right? The tense of the statement is going to be present tense. All right, we know that whenever we are putting out a statement, right, an universal statement, the tense of the uh, sentence is always in the present tense form. All right, so the only uh, sentence that has a present tense form and which is in a positive sense because we're giving a suggestion over here. We're giving out a suggestion. So we don't need a negative sentence, right? So need not taking any longer. Now any longer over here is a comparative form. Again, comparative form works only when there, there are two things to compare. But here there's, there's no thing to compare. There's only one statement. So we don't need any comparative form and we don't need any negative sentence over here. Hence, we are going to use the sentence need not take long to prepare. All right. So it's very easy to prepare. It doesn't take a long time. Next. Top your morning toast with scrambled eggs, a slice of smoked salmon, or some lean ham, and when dash time. Now, when you do have a little more time, right? So it says that when you want or when you have some extra time to spare. So when you do have a little more time, enjoy an omelet. All right. The next sentence that we have is you do have a little more. Now, you is a plural subject. All right. And with a plural subject, we never use has, we always use have. All right. So this is completely incorrect. We have chucked out this sentence for the first part. You do have a little much more time. Again, much more is an incorrect form of uh, comparison used over here. We don't use much more. We only use when you have more time. All right. So again, incorrect. Hence, option A over here becomes the correct statement for us. All right. So that is that. Can you just give me a second? Just give me a second, guys.
Uh, can you just guys let me know in the comment section below if my pen ink is visible to all of you guys because I have been writing here but I think my pen ink is not visible on the screen. Not visible, right? There has to be some glitch. Just give me a moment, I'll just sort it out. Until then, I'll just quickly um, suggest you to answer the next question, right? Until then, you answer this next question and I'll be there for you with the solution here. I hope you've understood the last question. Uh, you can answer this question over here. We'll be uh, providing you with the solution in just a few minutes. I'll quickly sort it out. You guys done. So it's a quick uh, sentence depending on a uh, sentence ordering question, right? A jumble paragraph or a paragraph jumble, whatever you can say. So let's quickly read it out first. All right. The Zhangjai National Forest Park in the Chinese province of Hunan, of Hunan features gigantic pillar like rock, the kind you see throughout the movies. So it's huge pillars uh, like floating around. All right. The only difference is they aren't floating, they are the result of many years of erosion. The erosion which forms these pillars is a result of expanding ice in the winter and the plants which grow on them. The floating hallelujah mountains you saw in the movie Avatar were inspired by a real place on the earth. So we have A, B, C, D, E or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 that you will have to arrange in a format um, which is going to help you uh, sequentialize the paragraph and proper, make a proper a coherent passage, right? So you have to arrange these questions in a way that they form a good passage, a meaningful passage. So please do that. Let me know which is your answer, A, B, E, D, C, C, D, A, B, E, or the other remaining two options. Till then, um, I'm going to just quickly, yes, it's going to be visible in the playlist. Yes, it's going to be there in the playlist forever and ever. So if you want to prepare for this particular session, uh, for this particular topic, you can go and definitely prepare later on if you are not quite available right now. All right, can you just quickly now let me know if my pen is visible now? If I just quickly write something over here, is it visible now? Now. Something's popping up. Popping 
like this some glitch just give me a moment I know what you just give me a moment I know it is either crossing out I'll have to do it again. It was not audio and there's no mic no camera no microphone. It is either crossing out.
off with the answers. I'm really sorry you won't be able to see the pen. There's some technical issue we couldn't solve right now, but because this was more important, so thanks, thanks, thanks a lot for your, all of your patience. If there's anyone who's dropped off, make sure you get them on board and start off with the session here. All right, so let's start off with the um, question here. All right, so the first thing that we have to notice here is the opening sentence. All right, and the most important opening sentence that we see over here with the nouns is sentence B. All right, that says the floating hallelujah mountains you saw in the movie Avatar were inspired by a real place on earth, right? So here we see that there are two mentions, the two proper nouns. First is the hallelujah mountains and second is the movie Avatar. So that has to be the first sentence, all right? So according to that, we have option D over here as the first sentence, all right? That eliminates option A and option B because these two start with a sentence A and C, which is not the correct answer. So we are trying to provide the trick of elimination over here and we remove A and B from the list itself. All right. Next, we come up with option C and option D. Now over here, what we have to do is we have to understand the second connecting sentence. Now, since we have talked about the Hallelujah Mountains over here, what we are going to do is we're going to talk about where these mountains were situated or where these mountains are located. All right. And that is in option A, which says the Zangjaya National Forest Park in the Chinese province of Hunan. So here is what the geographical location of these mountains are. And that is going to be a second sentence, which makes option D as the correct answer. So all of you who answered option D as the correct answer, kudos, you have answered it correctly. And all those who have answered it, let's say A, B or C, no worries. This is your practice session. You're practicing along with us and, and it's completely fine even if you go wrong. Just try to track yourself, track your progress, score yourself. This was the second question. So I would want to see the scores out of two, let's say one out of two or two out of two or zero out of two can also be an option. All right. Moving forward with the next question that we have on the screen is select the most appropriate meaning of the underlying idiom in the following sentence. Ritesh is a person who behaves like a servant by always obeying. All right. So there are a lot of people who behave like a servant who are always obeying and what do we call them do we call them a people pleaser do we call them yes ma'am do we call them lucky or do we call them a submissive person all right so you have to pick up a word that uh, correlates with the idiom behaves like a servant by always obeying all right so over here if you say a people pleaser what do you think a people pleaser is right a people pleaser is someone who loves to play good all right who loves to be in the good eyes of the people right that's a people pleaser not a servant yes ma'am yes ma'am is someone who tries to always uh, obey what someone else is saying right but not as a servant maybe as an individual or as a student right the last is submissive submissive over here talks about a uh, completely giving your uh, self to someone right without any uh, hesitance that is submissive but lackey over here lackey over here means a servant who always obeys or a person who behaves like a servant and who is always obeying to the master's decisions or a uh, master's orders all right so we are going to use lackey over here as the correct answer it's not submissive it's lackey all right a lackey is a person who behaves like a servant by always obeying all right. So again, I would want to see the scores out of three. If you've answered three out of three, one out of three, two out of three, or zero out of three, all of the scores are completely fine. Do not be ashamed. And I hope you are practicing along with me. If you are not, it's going to be your loss for preparations and my loss that I'm not being a good teacher. All right. And we know that we are not that. We are good people. We are here practicing all together. All right. Okay. So the next question is right up here on your screen, which talks about. Select the sentence in which the underlying idiom has been used appropriately. All right. And the idiom that we have in these sentences is an ace on your sleeve or ace upon your sleeve or ace in your sleeve. All right. Now that is going to be your key idiom in all the sentences. So look for a sentence which has used the idiom correctly. All right. The minister's popularity among elderly voters gives him an ace on his sleeve for the coming election in his native city. Or the Indian cricket had an ace upon their sleeve in the form of Kirti Shankar, the budding new all-rounder. Or the other two sentences. Now, what is the meaning of an ace 
on your sleeve. It means that you have a secret hidden inside and you only open the cards when it is absolutely necessary. All right. That is the meaning of the term and ace upon your sleeve. So you play the ace card when it is absolutely necessary. All right. Now, according to the sentences given us uh, right in front of us, the minister's popularity among elderly voters gives him an ace on it. Now, popularity is not a secret. Popularity is the mass, the population. All right. So we're not going to use the first sentence as the correct answer. The second says the Indian cricket had an ace upon their sleeve. Now, here, the Indian cricket team had an ace upon the sleeve. That means they had a secret player which was or uh, who was in the form of Kirti Shankar. So whenever uh, there might be a chance that they're losing the match, they would send away Kirti Shankar, who is an all-rounder, and uh, get the match won, right? So the Indian cricket team had a secret player. That can be a good use over here. So Ganda kept quiet at the board meeting. Who knew she had an ace hidden up her sleeves all this while? Now here, even if Suganda was quiet um, all the while, there was no secret that she was hiding. It could be a valid point, but there was no secret, right? And the ace cannot be hidden up your sleeve. It is only upon your sleeve. So again, the idiom has been incorrectly used over here. Lastly, the politician's rival had a sleeve up to his ace. Again, the idiom usage is completely incorrect over here. When it says sleeve up to his ace is completely incorrect. So we're not going to use that sentence. And the only correct sentence over here is option two which is the indian cricket team had an ace upon their sleeve in the form of kirti shankar the budding new all-rounder all right so option two over here is the correct answer and all of you who have answered option two as the correct answer kudos congratulations you're completely correct and if you are not it's completely fine you're just practicing along with john v and seth and stuff okay moving forward let's move to the fourth question we are going to go a little quick because we are up our time right uh, because of the technical glitch so we're going to go a little quick um in the sentence given below an error is being made in the line to make the sentence grammatically incorrect identify that error all right the professor along with his research team are working tirelessly to publish the findings in a prestigious journal all right so this is a very um quick little error so you have to understand the error right over here right it's very important it's, it's a very tiny little error so if you do if you get that that means a subject verb agreement is completely on point i have given you the hint right the answer is going to be on subject verb agreement the professor along with his research team are working tirelessly to publish the findings in a prestigious journal the answer over here is going to be option two which is are working why let me just quickly explain it out to you the reason that this is the op this is the answer is the professor over here is a singular subject. All right, number one rule. The second rule is whenever we join two subjects with the term along with or as well as or and along with, those sentences never consider the second subject as an important subject. The word is only identified or denoted uh, on the basis of the first subject. All right, and the first subject over here is singular. So we are going to use a singular verb, which is going to be is working instead of are working. All right, so we are going to use this option as the correct answer, right? Um, congratulations, Mohammed Akib, you're giving the correct explanation as well. So kudos, you have prepared for teachers and Kuti very nicely. And I'm proud of you that you are answering all of the questions Okay, so here comes a great news that we're already halfway done with our uh, entire session. So watch us for quickly drop your scores here. We have completed five questions, guys. Drop your scores, uh, like what is your score out of five? And then we'll move forward with the remaining questions. We are going to have some interesting questions coming up, right? But before that, let me just quickly take you to Prep and Start Prime, though there has been a lot many ads already. There are so many trailers running on before the session started. Let me just quickly take you through this one amazing world, which is a Netflix for learning over here. All right. And so since we are talking about the verbal section and especially uh, TCS NQT, we have a complete verbal course for you, which I've taught over here. And we have addressed all of the basic rules up till the advanced rules as well. Right. So if you want to understand what are the basics of verbal and the advances of the same, 
and of the other aptitude topic as well remaining accounting quantitative aptitude logical reasoning data interpretation visual reasoning and so on and so forth come on prep insta prime you if you can also use the coupon code youtube right y o u t u b e youtube and get some amazing discount on already discounted prices along with that we also have a complete course on tcs nqt specifically so if you want to prepare for tcs nqt apart uh, specifically denoting only this particular company you can also come here and get this course for yourself right along with that you're also going to get so much more which we are going to discuss towards the end of the video but right now we are halfway done the scores are pouring in and we are going to start off with the remaining half so congratulations let's move forward okay so here we have a bonus question guys and this bonus question is going to be a rewarding question now how is that going to happen what we are going to do is you can use this bonus question answer it in the comment section below once the session ends and whoever answers it correctly the first is going to get some goodies from prepinsta right so if you want to win some amazing goodies from prepinsta answer answer this question once the entire session ends answer it in the comment section below we'll go through the answers and anyone who answers it correctly is going to get a prepinsta goodie right So this is a bumper question, a rewarding question, a bonus question, whatever you may call it. So just address it in the comment section below. Bonus question answered, and just answer the question. Right? It's there, right on your screen. You can use this. Come on to this particular question later on. Till then, let's move forward with the next question here. All right. So choose the correct option and complete the given sentence. The documentary highlighted the devastating effects of climate change. Dash. it serve as a wake up call for many viewers all right so the documentary highlighted the devastating effects of climate change the first part of the sentence addresses the documentary's pros all right so it highlighted the devastating effects of climate change dash it served as a wake up call for many viewers now the second part of the sentence states here that because of the highlighting of the devastating effects it uh, alarmed the viewers all right so one cause stated the action of the second so it is a cause and effect relationship right and when we talking about a cause and effect relationship in between the two sentences the word or the prep or the conjunction that we can use to connect these two sentences is going to be consequently all right so this particular conjunction over here consequently which is which is a cause and effect a conjunction right or an analytical conjunction we can use this conjunction to join these two sentences the first is the cause highlighted the devastating effects and the second is the effect so what was the cause highlighting the effect and what was the effect it alarmed the viewers right so we are going to use consequently over here as the correct answer right that is going to be our analytical conjunction to connect the two sentences all right so if you have answered it correctly congratulations if you have if you have answered it on the other hand now on the other hand why is it incorrect because on the other hand means that you are deviating from the point you are presenting one view and when you want to present the second view you say on the other hand it's not the other hand it's the same side of the coin right because of this side the other thing happened so it's a consequence and not the other option so on the other hand is completely incorrect that is to say and none of the above is also incorrect we are going to use consequently all right i hope that's clear to all of you let's move forward with the next question okay the next question is right there on your screen guys select the most appropriate set of idioms that would fill in the blanks and complete the given passage right so you have to complete the given passage right over here you have four blanks and you have to fill in the idioms in the blanks and set it in a proper uh, set of tone or proper paragraph all right okay so let's move forward with the options here according to the report released by the global coral reef monitoring network Global warming has killed 14% of the world's coral reefs in a decade and more will be dash if oceans keep rising in temperature. Now I'll tell you the first blank is going to decide 
the entire answer i'll tell you how you will only have to pick up the keyword over here and what is the keyword the keyword is ocean right global warming ocean and what does an ocean does ocean has water and what does a, like what does a glass of water do it wipes out everything right a water can never phase you out or puff you out or kick you out a water can only wipe you out and there's your answer your answer is option c over here which says wiped out unsettling friends sit over the problem and hardest hit so you have the answer right over here right and that is the easiest way to answer any question if you want to know more such tricks on how to answer and uh, how to answer a question in just a few seconds that is what we have taught in our prep and sub prime course if you come inside this particular course over here in the verbal section that is what you are going to find you are going to find the um, difficult a uh, process as well the longer process as well and you are going to also practice the easier process or the shorter process of answering questions within just a few clicks and if you want to understand that come get our course and subscribe to prep and subprime and you can also use the coupon code youtube to get some extra discount that's a uh, good news for all of the students here all right so answer c over here is the correct answer um so let's quickly read the paragraph here and more will be wiped out if the oceans keep rising in temperature these are clearly unsettling trends towards coral loss and we can expect these to continue if we sit over the problem and lastly uh, as per the report corals in many parts of the asia and gulf are among the hardest hit all right so that's your answer option c is our answer for this particular question okay moving forward we have another very quick a uh, cute graphical question choose the synonym for the given word all right so you have to choose the synonym for the word that is given out to you so understand what is the meaning of this particular word and then answer the question i'm going to give you 10 to 15 seconds for this all right so quickly guess the word and answer the questions let me just see how many of you answer the question correctly for this question i want to see how many of you have a great vocabulary a great dictionary in your head so there are 24 people watching this live session but only 3 or 4 are answering uh, what are the others doing others are just sipping some coffee sipping some water having some popcorn and watching me just going all ham talking talking so please just let me know what is the answer for this particular question if anyone answers this i'm going to give them a reward personally at okay anyone who can guess this word over here give me the answer guys let me just tell you one thing that you cannot answer this question because the word is incorrect you will have to first assemble the word and the word over here is gregarious all right the actual word for the synonym of which you will have to look for is gregarious all right so we need a synonym for the word gregarious and what is the meaning of the word gregarious guys gregarious means who is someone who is very sociable someone who can just go out talk to friends make new friends and just gel well with people right vibe with the people that is the meaning of gregarious now you need a synonym for the same so we all know what is the meaning of introverted if if you are an introvert person you are very bad at making friends right so you can be me i'm an introvert and like it's very difficult to make friends right so that's an introvert if you're an extroverted person that means you're a very sociable person you can go out and make friends with people right so that's an extroverted person right and the next is gregable gregable is someone who is capable of being graded so it is completely out of the context right and the answer uh, for the term gregarious is extroverted right so option b extroverted will be the correct answer for the term synonym uh, no lavanya you will not have to correct it it was just a quick little puzzle that i had played you will not have to do this when the tcs and qt comes they don't play such easy games with you they play very hard mind games with you which they are doing it right now they are not announcing right so no this is this was just my little fun um you don't have to worry about arranging the words during the examination that won't happen to you all right i hope you answered um, extroverted over here if you have 
kudos if you haven't just practice along with me no worries if you want to enhance your vocabulary just go ahead learn five words every day practice those five words in proper context and you are going to build up a library of thousands of words in your head i am telling you if you start practicing right now you're going to build a library a huge library in your head okay so let's do one thing all right uh, we are going to just answer this question last and then we are going to end up our session all right so what you're going to do is parts of the sentence have been given as options one of them contains a grammatical error select the option that has the error all right so we have a huge passage and there are three sentences which are grammatically correct and one sentence which is grammatically incorrect all right so we have to look for that one single sentence so i'm going to give you just a minute to not a minute sorry i'm just going to give you 10 seconds to answer this and then we'll start off with the solution here okay and after this i want all of your scores i want 29 or 20 at least 20 people to drop their scores and i want to see how many of you are answering along with me all right so let's quickly come to the solution for this question the first sentence says however along with the advancements ethical considerations surrounding ai have emerged now there are two options which could be incorrect first is however along with the advancement ethical considerations surrounding ai have emerged now because ethical considerations is a plural term we have used a plural verb over here which is have emerged completely correct so option a or sentence a is completely correct so we're going to eliminate that Second, uh, sentence b questions of privacy bias and accountability arise as ai systems increasingly influence decision making processes now again this sentence is completely correct because we use questions of privacy the so questions is a plural subject and arise is a plural verb all right so completely correct increasingly influence decision making processes correct use of adverb and adjective all right next sentence it becomes crucial to strike a balance among technical innovation and ensuring ethical practices now the error lies in this sentence and what is the error there are two uh, elements that we are considering right over here all right and those two elements are number one technical innovation and number two ethical uh, practices all right and when there are only two subjects to be balanced we do not use the conjunction among all right we only use the conjunction between all right so instead of using among we use between okay and we are going to use it becomes crucial to strike a balance between technical innovation and ensuring ethical practices to maximize the benefits of ai while mitigating potential risk the entire paragraph is correct there's only one word which is incorrect which is among instead of among we are going to use between all right and that is the error over here so i hope you understand what the error is if you haven't let me know you can join us on discord and just take a screenshot of these slides whichever uh, explanation you don't understand drop it on discord and i'll be explaining you properly over there as well if you are not able to understand what the actual explanation is right here on this live session all right so you can join us on discord you can join us on instagram whatsapp and dm us over there with all your queries your queries will be resolved all right so yeah complete we have completed all of the questions i want all of your scores in the live chat below right now and it's homework time i know all of you love homework sarcastically no we don't love homework but i am giving you some homework we have three questions over here number 1 we have a reading passage so the passage is right here on your screen you can take the screenshots of the passages or you can come back pause it and read the passage over here so there's one paragraph and two paragraphs all right so there are two slides of passages and then you have the questions as well so question number 1 and question number 2 all right so there are three questions that you will have to answer the first is this question all right this question over here fill in the blank and the second is two reading comprehension question the reading comprehension is right here on your screen this is screen number 1 
screen number two. So read the entire comprehension, take the screenshot or just pause it here, read it and answer these two questions. Answer these questions in the comment section below once the live session ends and whoever answers the question correctly, you are completely ready for thesis and duty and maybe, maybe, maybe we can pick you up for some goodies as well, uh, for some rewards from prep and stuff, right? So do that. All right. And yes, it's homework time. And how cute is that? Dropping up all the questions, dropping up all the sheets right in front of you. All right. And if you have any other queries regarding any of the questions or the explanations, what you can do is you can uh, drop all of your queries on Discord, right? On Discord, we have a complete. Uh, I'll just quickly show you what we have on Discord. All right. We have a general discussion group where you can drop down all your queries with the image and I'll be providing with all of the solutions if in case you cannot understand the solutions here. All right, ma'am, do we have accuracy to complete the exam? Yes, um, like you will have to be on time. Right, you will have to be very quick. You will have to be very accurate with your answers and everything. Now before logging off, let me just quickly take you through prep and stuff and just one last time. Uh, if you just come down, you see that we also have the entire interview preparation section which is going to prepare you for the interview because let's be honest, interviews are the deciding ground for any selection, right? So once you complete the entire um, aptitude round, the coding round, you will have to prepare for the interview and we prepare you for the same as well. So maybe you want to sit for TCS, maybe you want to sit for Tech Mahindra, Deloitte or any other company. We have covered you all from all of the sides, right? So Reppin Star Prime is going to help you out in your placement preparation this time this placement season you can use the coupon code youtube to get some extra discount on already discounted prices so make sure that you're joining us on our whatsapp on our linkedin join our whatsapp group on our instagram as well and reap the benefits of prepinsta and prepinsta prime this placement season thank you so much for joining us for this particular session if there's any query drop all your queries in the comment section below or dm us discord or whatsapp us or just find us anywhere and drop your queries. We'll be solving all of them out. Also, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel because the moment TCS announces the drive, we are going to come live and drop the bomb onto you. All right, also click the notification bell as well so you don't forget to get the notification that TCS has started to announce or any other company. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, guys. It's a request from me to you. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching this session along with me. I hope you solved the set, uh, solved the questions. And if you haven't, it's going to be your loss. And if you want to just go back, read through the passage, read through the entire live session and answer the questions at your pace. So there are three questions to be answered. Homework questions and the bumper question. We'll be looking forward to get all your answers in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching this session. We can end our live over here.